A fast and fun roguelike shooter which, although rough around the edges, hits all the right buttons. Welcome to The Killing Room, or rather The Killing Rooms. This is a roguelike FPS shooter which I think is probably the first to really extract the fun elements out of both genres and blend them together correctly. Many have tried and failed, but I would be happy to say that this one finally gets the job done. The only other one that I've played and ticked all of the boxes was Ziggurat, which although a fantastic game used magic instead of guns, it just didn't provide the same feel, and that's exactly what Killing Room corrects. The story here is practically non-existent, as you might expect. It all boils down to getting a bunch of no-hopers and throwing them into an environment which will either provide them with infinite money or be their tomb. It does have a tutorial, but honestly it doesn't really teach you a great deal. The main benefit you get from completing it is a 1% upgrade to some of your stats. So it's worth doing, but you don't really understand how the game works until you get your hands dirty and a few characters hit the deck. I'll start with what is probably the most important element of the entire game, which is the popularity system. This dictates what kind of rewards or punishments you'll get at the end of a level. You gain more popularity with the viewers by entering side rooms, getting kill combos, or saving ducks. This popularity can then be used to purchase things like health and armor rewards from the various vending machines on the levels, but it is important to keep your popularity high for the end of the level, because it's one of the best ways of improving your character's abilities. You can also boost your popularity by choosing to take bad items, which from my experience is a really bad idea. Some of the bad items can essentially ruin your entire run, such as the one which increases the number of bear traps, which is equivalent to a death sentence. In fact, the only reason I can actually see for taking part in the random chance activities, which could give you bad items, is if you think your run is already over and as a last ditch attempt to try and recover. The way the popularity system works is actually incredibly clever. It gives you the opportunity to choose how random your run is, while in other roguelites your run can be destroyed by doing something you had no choice in. In basic terms, Killing Room gives you the dice and lets you choose whether you want to roll them or not. But you don't get to choose every aspect. The rooms themselves remain entirely random. You will get some which you have little chance of making it through without taking at least some damage, either because the monster mix is particularly deadly, or because the room is littered with traps to get you while you're not looking. There is a good variety of rooms, not just in terms of the layout and shape, but also in terms of the activities involved. You could encounter anything from a trap room to a puzzle room, and each have their own merits. The only one which I really object to is the puzzle room in which you need to have a barcode reader on your phone in order to actually read the answer. The other puzzles can be challenging the first time, but once you know how to do it, they become routine. The trap rooms can have anything from fireball or laser ridden paths to swinging axes which require timing and accuracy in order to make your way through. It's like making your way through Crystal Maze or Fort Boyard. Monster variety is also there to back it all up and give you enough reasons to be cautious about entering rooms on low HP. As with almost all games, the most irritating monsters are the explosive laden suiciders, but they're essentially a part of the backbone of gaming at this point. Bosses for each level appear to be the same from what I've seen, but each of them have different attacks to deal with. It's just a shame that one of them appears three times with essentially the same model and attacks, but with slight variations on those attacks and more armor each time. The weapons are also nicely varied, with the majority of your standard shotgun and assault rifles, but it does also include a fly swatter, some shears, and a laser cannon which is pretty much copy and pasted straight from Serious Sam. The soundtrack is pretty good, with the predominant theme being metal, but with tinges of slightly more comical tracks for the boss intros, which add to the overall light-hearted nature of the game. It's obvious that the main intention of this game was to be very tongue-in-cheek with its humour. Graphically, it's not going to win any awards, but it's more than good enough for what it's trying to do. I only have slight gripes with things like the smoke clouds created by destroying boxes hanging around too long but nothing that's going to ruin the game. There are one or two bugs here and there which are getting patched out on just about a bi-daily basis at the moment. Things like the death counter adding two for one death and some achievements not working correctly. I haven't had any game-breaking issues and the support for the minor inconveniences there. What this all amounts to is a thoroughly enjoyable game packed with references, challenges and some good old-fashioned bullets flying action which I could more than happily keep playing time and time again. In terms of game time, it took me 7 hours to finally scratch my first win, which took in the region of 11 attempts. The average run would take about 30 minutes, but a complete run took about 2 hours. You get one save for a run, which can be used between the levels. I would say that the difficulty is pretty much perfect, as any run you go on could be a winning one, and death isn't randomly assigned, but usually a result of several mistakes in a row. Too many games seem to be going down the route of random chance death being difficulty, this does it the correct way by making it hard, but you always have a chance to make it through. This game is a steal in my opinion. It has a huge amount of replayability and offers a lot of opportunity to try different things and be good fun while you do it. It also has a reference to Red Dwarf, which is guaranteed to win major points in my book. If you've ever seen the film Cube, this is the closest you're going to get to a game equivalent.